Hi everybody, Steve from Steve's Makerspace. I'm about to sell my first NFT art featuring this stuff. So in today's video, I'll go over how to buy NFT art and not screw the environment in the process. Now, I unfortunately had a problem with my mic throughout this video, so it's not gonna sound very good, uh, but I really don't want to record the whole thing over again. First, I'll talk briefly about environmental concerns over NFTs. Second, talk about using Coinbase to trade dollars for Tezos, the cryptocurrency that we'll be using. Third, getting a wallet set up so you can link your Tezos to NFT marketplaces. And fourth, look at some of the process of actually buying NFT art on FX Hash and object to NFT marketplaces. There are time steps on the video, so if you want to skip ahead, you can. First, the environmental concerns. There's a lot I could go into here, but I don't want this to be a video about that. The very short story is that NFT art in general has been quite bad for the environment because the method used to validate transactions on the blockchain uses a ridiculous amount of energy, like enough to power an entire house for several days just for one transaction. And this method is called proof of work but the NFT art I'm talking about on the Tezos blockchain uses a different method. It uses proof of stake, and it's not bad for the environment. A transaction with Tezos is estimated to use as much electricity as running a 60 watt light bulb for 40 minutes. You use more than that when you play a video game. I'll provide a few links in the video description if you wanna look more into this stuff. So now we're gonna get into the video that has bad mic, sorry. Now let me give you a little bit of an overview by working my way backwards. I'm on the FX Hash Marketplace. I'm looking at this project by NeoMint and I can mint an iteration here for three Tezos. Now if I mint, you see this up here, this is my wallet and it has Tezos in it. And when I hit mint, it's gonna open up my wallet and ask me if I wanna spend my Tezos. Now I can buy Tezos from my wallet but I can't get the Tezos out of my wallet into dollars. If I ever want to get dollars for my Tezos, I'm going to need something like Coinbase, which is for exchanging dollars and Tezos back and forth. So most people would start with Coinbase, buy their dollars here, then transfer it into the Temple wallet. Then connect the Temple wallet to FX Hash, and then you'll be ready to buy the art. So let's start with Coinbase. We're going to sign up. We'll say we're an individual. It's going to ask for our name and email, set up a password. It sends something to our email to confirm our email. After you've set up your free account with Coinbase, you're going to have a zero here, and you're going to need to buy some cryptocurrency. So we're going to need to buy. Now make sure this comes up automatically with Bitcoin. You want to switch that to Tezos because you don't want to buy Bitcoin. And we'll select Tezos. And what are we going to pay with? So now down here, you can see add a payment method. The recommended is to use your bank account. So we're going to use something called Plaid to connect to our bank account. And these are some of the larger banks that apparently will connect with Plaid. Now I use UW Credit Union and UW Credit Union did not like Plaid. It did not want to trade with me. Hopefully you'll have better luck than I did. The next thing I tried to do was to link my UW Visa card, and that was also unsuccessful. I tried and the card rejected it because it thought it was fraud. So that was two attempts that didn't work. So then my third attempt was using PayPal, and I was finally able to use PayPal to buy. Unfortunately, I had to wait a few days several days in fact, before the PayPal money showed up and it was cleared. So if you wanna buy with PayPal, make sure you do it in advance of when you wanna actually use that cryptocurrency. There are gonna be fees just for making the purchase. They are kinda of high. Um, I believe I tried buying $50 worth of Tezos and right now I have only $43.40. Now, one thing to keep in mind with buying any cryptocurrency is that it fluctuates. So as of this recording, a, one Tezos costs $1.41, but here back on September 11th, one Tezos costs $1.68. Once you manage to buy your Tezos, 
then you can send the Tezos to the Temple Wallet. But first we need to get started with Temple Wallet. You can use Temple Wallet on your mobile app or the web extension. I would suggest starting with the web extension. So you're going to click web extension and download the web extension. Uh, and you can see that there are different web extensions. Here I'm switching to Chrome and I've removed Temple Wallet from my extension. Uh, let me add to Chrome. It's going to ask me if I want to add Tezos Wallet. I'll say yes. Tezos has been added to Chrome and now it's going to ask me if I want to import an existing wallet or create a new wallet. For now, let's say we're creating a new wallet. It's going to give us a seed phrase, which we're going to click on to reveal. And this isn't going to be something I'm going to keep, but this is what the seed phrase would look like. So 12 random words. You would copy these words into a secure document where you would keep it in case you get locked out or you need to use it in a different browser. You never want to show this to anybody. I'm not going to use this for my own transactions. Now I want to make sure that I've saved that seed phrase. So let me check. Um, I've got this word. Here I've got this word. Hit next. And now it wants me to create a password. So the password is going to be in addition to the seed phrase. Uh, you'll be using the password to unlock your wallet on a regular basis. So I'm going to agree to the analytics, skip the onboarding, accept the terms, and create. Temple Wallet is updated. Got it. So now I've got my Temple Wallet with zero Tez in it. My Temple Wallet has an address. I can click on here and copy that to a clipboard. The address looks something like this, a bunch of letters and numbers. And this is, if you want to send money to the wallet, this is what you're sending to. We're going to switch to the wallet that I actually already have. Let's go back to Coinbase. If we look at my assets, I have $41 in Tezos and I have $1.94 in US dollars. So I want to send my Tezos up here to my wallet. So I send Tezos. So I'm going to go over to my wallet, the one that I actually use. I'll copy this to my clipboard. I'll go back to here and paste here. So that's where I'm sending it to. And I need to say how much I'm going to send. If I hit send all, it comes up with $41.51. I don't think there's a reason to keep any of it in Coinbase. It would probably be better in my wallet. So let's hit continue. It's going to confirm, yes, you're going to send this. Payment received, estimate about 30 minutes. So it's going to let it take some time for the wallet to receive this money. Let's go ahead and send it. And it says that it's sent. Back to the Temple Wallet. Uh, let's say I wanted to send money. Oh, there it is. It just showed up. Now let's say I want to send money back to Coinbase. Uh, then there's also a send here and I need to give it an address. And if we go back to Coinbase, um, I can hit send and receive and receive. And here is my address on Coinbase and I can copy this. Let's say we're using a new browser and we want to import an existing wallet. So I'm gonna click on import an existing wallet and now I need to type in the seed phrase. I can also just copy paste the entire thing into any field. So I put that in and it's invisible. We'll hit next. I'm going to put in my password. And I believe the password I'm putting in now is specific to this browser. So I'm going to import that. And there it is. There's my Tezos. Up here, I've got the extensions. There it is. I want to pin it so it shows up. Now I can go to FX Hash. And now I need to sync my Temple Wallet with FX Hash. So I'll click on Sync. Click on the Temple Wallet. Something is not working. Let me try uh, refreshing the page. Try syncing. There we go, Temple Wallet. Now it's gonna ask me, do I want to connect FX Hash to Temple Wallet? I'll say yes, I wanna connect it. Temple Tezos Wallet has granted permission and there we go, there's me. So finally, I've got some Tezos that I can use to buy art on FX Hash. Now let's also go to object.com and I'll sync that as well. So click on sync. I'll sync my wallet. 
I've confirmed that I want to connect to the temple. It's going to ask me, are you sure? Yes, temple Tezos wallet successfully signed. It's still thinking about adding me here. There it is. There's my face. Object is a more straightforward place to buy NFT art. Uh, people post things that they want to sell and you buy things from them. Okay, here's me with the mic fixed. Sorry about all that. And I just searched for an artist that I know about that I'd like to buy something from. So this is Oaks Malfunk, I guess. I make things to give myself strength. Generative artist, very nice. Now, we want to make sure that this is the correct artist because there is a problem with some people copying art and then posting it as if it's their own when they don't actually own it. Uh, so what we can do is we can follow this to um, Malfunk's Twitter account and say, yep, that is Malfunk. That's the guy. We can go to his link tree. Now, he doesn't have his object account on his link tree, unfortunately. That would make me feel better that I'm actually linking to Ox Malfunk. I could go to his FX hash, though, and I can see, yep, that's Malfunk's FX hash account. So that gives me some comfort. Let's go ahead and buy something. I'm going to buy this lovely item for 1.2 Tez. So I'll hit buy. It's going to open up my wallet and say, do I want to confirm this? Now, if I haven't been using this browser for a while, it will ask me for my password. And now I'm going to hit confirm to buy this. And now it's confirmed that it's purchased. So now let's click on this and go to profile and I can look at things that are owned by me and here it is. And I just bought this from Studio Captain but realized I had paused the video recording. So I bought two things. So here's this and down here is a history. I can click on that and you can see that Oxmal Funk minted this um, back down here on August 6th. This was transferred a couple of times and I just bought it from this person. If I look at the history of this Studio Captain item, Musings number five, uh, this one has 15 editions. So I'm not the only owner of this. So if I look at the history, there's a whole bunch of people here because they all own different editions. The one I bought, I bought from Walu and Walu originally bought it from Studio Captain for 3 Tez, and I bought it for 4.4 Tez, so Walu made a 1.4 Tez profit. So object is more straightforward, you're buying some art. Now, FX hash is a little more complicated. There's something here called collecting art on FX hash you might wanna take a look at. A Couple of things that are different about FX hash. One is that it's a place for generative art, which means that this is not necessarily what I'm going to buy. This is just a representation of what I might buy. So if I hit variations, you'll see something new that's using the same code, but is creating something completely unique. Uh, if we look down here in the iterations, these are things that people have minted. Minting is buying one unique iteration from the code. So if I want, I could mint an iteration from NeoMint for three Tez. Now, I'm not going to get this. I don't know what I'm going to get. It's kind of like Pokemon cards or a mystery sweater. You just get, get what you get. But I think this is interesting and not too pricey. So let's go ahead and mint it. So I click mint. It's going to confirm my wallet. I'll hit confirm. And then I wait a little bit. And it's processing. So we're gonna see what we get. I don't know. Okay, that took about 20 seconds. Uh, the operation successfully injected into the blockchain. Now it's time to reveal what I actually purchased. Let's hit. And what is it gonna be? Here it is. Oh, that's nice. I'm happy with my purchase, very good. Now I can click open live and that'll give me maybe a larger size. Now let me go back to here. Sometimes there are options and I don't see any options in here, unfortunately. But let's look at one of these other ones. This one, 
uh, has options to hide the sun, hide tag, hide grain, save a PNG file by hitting S. Uh, this would only be in the live version. You'd have to hit this open. And now I can hit S and save a PNG. Uh, it also has save larger sizes, or it might be something saving with more uh, dense pixels. So that way it would be more suitable for framing. Now this one is not a regular sale. This is a Dutch auction. With a Dutch auction, you start out at a certain time and say the auction is going to start here and it's going to start at three tes in this case and then changes every seven minutes. Uh, this, these are all options that the artist put in. Uh, so it, then it, after seven minutes, it goes down to 2.5. It could sell out at the top price or if people aren't rushing to buy, it might get all the way to the low price before people buy. This one had 128 pieces possible that the artist made available. Auctions are pretty exciting. You don't know if you're gonna uh, be able to grab the piece at the low price or are you gonna have to get it at the high price. If you do miss the auction, then you're gonna have to go to the marketplace, which is a more standard purchase of items just like object. This one also has features. This is how rarely do different things appear in the artwork. Collectors tend to like things that are rare. Let's click on my profile and go to collections. And here are the things that I own right now. Well, anyway, I think I've covered everything I wanted to cover in this video. Again, I am gonna be selling my artwork on FX hash soon. It's going to be a Dutch auction. I'll leave a link in the video description to my FX hash page that'll look like this. You'll be able to click on the variations to see what kind of things my code can create. But to actually buy from me, you'll have to wait for the auction to start. The auction will be Thursday at 2 p.m. Eastern Time, 6 p.m. Greenwich Mean Time. Uh, the live stream will start about 10 minutes before that. So that's going to do it for this video. If you've liked this video, give it a like. Consider subscribing to the channel for... Um, I've got a bunch of generative art videos on my channel. Comments are always welcome, especially if you are more experienced than I am with FX Hash or buying uh, clean NFT art. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Bye now. Steve's Makerspace.